due to its central location, its ideal location next to water, and its uncanny resemblance to a boot, Italy has always played a central role in the politics of the Mediterranean. In the center of Italy is a small city called Rome. Yes, the place where Audrey Hepburn takes her holidays and just a stone's throw from the Pope's crib. One of the oldest known civilizations in the area of Rome was the Etruscans. If you take out the E, take out the R, and change the S to a Y, you can see where the Italian Tuscany comes from. This was because Romans often referred to the Etruscans as Tushi or Etrushi. The Etruscans also shared the land of the Greeks and the Romans. For many of the years from the year 800 BCE to 100 BCE, the Etruscans held much of the power in and around Rome. Eventually, however, the Etruscans were overrun by the Romans, and the Romans set up a new style of government known as a republic, not to be confused with Plato's treatise or the store with the banana. In many governments, one man, known as a dictator or king, would often hold power over the regular Joes. But in a, in a republic, the Romans didn't want any one person to hold too much power, so they got rid of the dictator and any person could become a leader. Well, actually you had to be male, well, actually you had to be a free male, slaves weren't even three-fifths of a person yet. In the Republic, you'd always have 300 senators from the upper class to lead the people. Senators were always elected to a life term. They would elect people known as consuls to lead the people in day-to-day -day affairs, but they were only elected for one term. When war came along, they would bring back the dictator to lead them into war. But these dictators were only elected for six months and then had to give up their power. A good example of a dictator was Cincinnatus, who had only held power for 16 days. However, as the empire got bigger, it was harder and harder to control the government, and eventually a man named Caesar Augustus came along and gained a lot of power. The senators were afraid of him because they thought he was not going to disband his power. They told him that once he crossed the river, he had to give up his power or else. Of course, Mr. Augustus called their bluff and crossed the Rubicon. He never gave up his power. He kept up the Senate for appearances, but was now the sole leader of what would later be known as the Roman Empire.